Thank you, Steve. Uh, <laughs> I, I was going to say from here, you read it just the way I wrote it, but I, I, it really is. There are a couple of things you got wrong, but we'll, uh, some adverbs you left out. Um, but thank you very much. Holy smokes. Um, I guess we're all through because cause Steve took so long uh, doing that, which is really uh, kind of the plan we worked out. So thanks for doing that. Um, it, it's really uh, very nice to be here. It's, it's an honor to be here. It's nice uh, for you to take time out in the middle of a, a beautiful day to, uh, to uh, come here and uh, maybe cut out a class. I think I see one or two of my students here. We'll talk about that in the hallway. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, to, to <clears throat> you know, I have to do this. I wanted to thank a few people before I get started just talking and blabbing a little bit about this, this book that I wrote. Uh, I just want to give some shout outs to the folks who uh, are the anonymous you know, heroes when you work on a, a book. Um, there are a you know, cast of thousands behind you. Um, so uh, Teresa May at the University of Texas Press, uh, Allison Faust, um, who's the sponsoring editor at, the, at UT Press, uh, that uh, kind of endured a, a lot of grief from me in, in emails. Uh, Lynn Chapman, who uh, basically sort of the Tony Robbins of copy editors. I ran across hot coals about 800 times with her, but then grew to realize it was for a good reason. Initially, maybe not so, but uh, Lynn, if you're here, thank you for straightening me out, cleaning up my copy. Uh, Dave Hamrick at UT Press as well. Uh, Colleen Devine, uh, folks again who labor to, uh, you know, anonymously and quietly to to help you look good, um, and Joanna Hitchcock, who helps to run the, the show over there. She's going to lunch, I learned, today with my wife, and uh, I, meant to <clears throat> I meant to put a wire on you know, one of them to, so I could figure out what they're saying about me. Um, and, and of course, I'd be really remiss. When you look around uh, you, you, this building that we're in, this, this wing of the building, uh, you realize the, uh, the enduring uh, treasure that, that Bill Whitliffe is and uh, the, the enormous contributions that he's made to uh, art, arts and letters in Texas. Uh, this is just really a, a, a fascinating and beautiful uh, place, a great treasure. So Bill Whitliffe gets a enormous respect and appreciation for the work that he's done. I know many of you uh, know him, and uh, even if you don't, you have seen uh, his handiwork, either his own work uh, or work that he's helped to uh, to sponsor. He's truly an artist and a patron of the arts at the same time. So um, it's great to be here. It's an honor to to have had this book, you know, come out under the auspices of uh, the Southwestern Writers Collection book series. And Bill Whitliffe, my extension. Um, it's kind of weird. I, I was trying to read my handwriting here. You were the the one log rolling thing that I really like is a, a provocative because it means nothing, but it's all all purpose. You know, when you when you all are doing your next books, just use this one. It's a provocative book about a provocative topic. That just it just doesn't really mean anything, but it works so perfectly. It just fits. And then uh, when I used to review movies once in a blue moon uh, for the San Antonio Express News, the boiler plate there was a hats off hooray to Hollywood. It really meant nothing, but it seemed to work. And then uh, you were talking about, uh, uh, you know, maybe you were, if I heard you right, you know, writing the zeitgeist, trying to figure out what's uh, popular and selling and, you know, books about dogs and things like that. And, and coincidentally, we were, I was having a discussion with someone who had, who had once helped to run the, uh, the uh, Texas Book Festival just yesterday. Uh, and we were deciding that we need to figure out how to marry uh, the book, uh, the Twilight series, with dogs. So we started off by saying uh, uh, just simply, uh, you know, Twilight Dogs. But then, then we settled in a, in a fit of inspiration on Dogula. So it's copyrighted, don't try to get it. We, I'm, I, we got that one, so. <laughs> um, let me, uh, you know, I, I really want to linger with, with, with Steve for a second. I, I, it's not all of this, but uh, Steve Davis, uh, if anybody had read this story not too long ago in the Austin American Statesman, you, you, it was a wonderful story by a great writer there, Patrick Beach, who's a very astute um, writer, and, and it was a profile of Steve um, in the, the net effect of it, the, uh, the drawdown is that Steve, um, based on many viewpoints and a lot of anecdotal evidence, is really one of the, the important figures in Texas literature today. Uh, he's written very significant books uh, about Texas literature. Um, 
and he's helping to promote and protect Texas literature in, in these, again, almost anonymous ways that we hardly uh, hear about. And what Steve is really brilliant at doing, I urge you to please get to know him. He's right over there. You, you uh, just heard him speak. Uh, seek out his work because it, it accomplishes uh, things that I think a lot of uh, writers would like to get to. I know I, I sort of fumblingly tried to get to. Uh, and the few students here in my class are now going to fall asleep because this is my mantra in every class that uh, really good writing, in my opinion, uh, narrative nonfiction writing, um, is uh, comprised by two key elements, um, an attention to microscopic or microcosmic details, intimate details, and then just very simply uh, this macrocosmic worldview. It, what do I, you know, these are my $10 words that I've, I've learned, you know, since I have to stand up in front of a, a class a lot. But I simply mean that you apply history and context and this panorama, the true understanding. Some people just get it, they intuit it, it just comes to them. I hate those people. Uh, other people study it and learn it and absorb it over time. Uh, just by going around. I, I think I took that latter, latter route because I, I, nothing comes easy uh, for me. Uh, and I don't know, again, that I succeeded. But to talk about Steve and steer it back to him, Steve does that marvelously, brilliantly in his work. So then when you read it, you'll read the intimate details of someone's life, J. Frank Dovey uh, and, and some of the other pivotal uh, writers in Texas history whom he's chronicled. Uh, legacy value books, I would call that, what Steve does. So you have the, these intimate details, the anecdotes, they're, they're page turners, but as well there's this macrocosmic um, uh, background, the landscape, figures, uh, intimate details set against this big landscape. Steve does it brilliantly. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so seek out his work. That's my way of, of uh, you know, trying to compliment you as much as you uh, Complimented, complimented me. He's also a very cool guy. The last time I was in this room, um, it was for Steve's uh, reading and discussion. And so I'm, you know, thinking Steve's kind of preoccupied. He's got to get his notes together and put on a good act and everything. And uh, he had a great slideshow then. I was really, uh, I was envious. Uh, but, but Steve suddenly takes a little break from what he's doing. He's mingling and, and runs to the ba back room here and comes out with a big grocery bag. That, that's quite heavy and hands me a grocery bag. I see thought I hadn't been eating enough. And then um, it's filled with rocks because Steve knows that I, I love uh, to collect rocks. And Steve being an extremely thoughtful and, and fr uh, thoughtful uh, friend of Mother Earth collects, travels around the state uh, on a couple of missions. One is to swim in every uh, clear and clean body of water available in, in Texas with his family, but as well to collect these rocks um, that are really, as I call it, Mother Earth, Texas. Um, I, I'm lingering with Steve a little bit because this book wouldn't exist if not for Steve um, exercising that sort of eternal curiosity that I think goes into this exploration that he has of, uh, of all good things, elemental things, you know, literally picking up the, you know, the bedrock of Texas and, and, and looking at that rock, turning it over and looking underneath. Uh, it's, a, it's a cheap... Uh, uh, reference to what I think Steve might have done uh, in my case, because we didn't know each other. And through his innate curiosity, uh, having his radar turned on, his willingness to kind of take a turn down an unmarked road uh, for whatever reason, and I'm eternally grateful and blessed, to use a word, not to get uh, too religious on you, uh, but uh, that Steve decided to kind of kick over a rock and say, oh, you know, what's under there? And I came crawling out. So um, I, uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, we're kind of uh, going on and on about each other here, but I, I, I wanted you to know a little bit about the, the backdrop of this process and how this work came into existence. Steve, uh, uh, in some way, found me, and for the life of me, I'm, I'm somewhere north of a healthy skeptic. I'm, uh, uh, you know, uh, somewhere pretty far north uh, of that, and so I wondered what Steve's M.O. was, what was he up to, what's the motivation, and I, I'm still suspicious, mildly, but I, I think it's just simply born out of eternal curiosity and, and an interest in, in taking a look at things that he thinks might approximate that marriage of intimate details, some reporting, you might call it, uh, and, and then as well this, this bigger view, this panorama I, I don't know that I intentionally was trying to do that uh, as I was sort of working through my process and, and doing stories. I was mainly trying to stay out of the office 
uh, and uh, use my cheap lines like, boss, I'm going to take the pulse of the city now. And that's going to probably take me all day, maybe all week, so you won't see me. Um, and then my other cheap line was when I'd come back, they'd say, well, how's the work going? I'd, I'd, I, and I urge you to use this, and I tell my students, the first day of class, the only valuable thing I'm going to say to you is this line that you should use in every workplace environment. Boss, it's a building with a quiet intensity. That, that seems to work, because it has a little shine or gloss on it. And uh, uh, I got busted on campus uh, not too long ago. Actually, um, I, I, I was talking to uh, a colleague uh, who has more stripes on his shoulder than I do, a higher ranking uh, professor there. <clears throat> and he was asking me, it was actually several months ago, asking me, uh, uh, how's that book on Molly Ivins coming? And I, I just, I, don't know, I pressed the default button over here and I said, well, you know, it's building with a quiet intensity. And, and one of my students walked by just as I said that and she burst out laughing. <laughs> so I was, I was busted, but it worked. I think that was really the point. You know, the, guy, the, guy, the guy stopped bugging me. <laughs> so um, looking out across the room, by the way, there were an, an enormously talented group of people here. I'm seeing my colleague Dennis Darling uh, here whose work uh, hangs uh, in, in this room, a uh, wonderful photographer, and, and I'm going to be remiss in not pointing out others. So uh, uh, I, I wanted to give you a shout out as well. Um, so <laughs> I have here written on my notes uh, to get back to rocks uh, that Steve knows something uh, uh, that uh, you know uh, we all should know that sometimes it's it's worth picking up that rock that that has the dirt on top and might reveal some beautiful red plume agate underneath. That's one of the treasures that Steve uh, gifted me with. And so what I wrote here is, uh, which of course is how he found me under a rock. <clears throat> um, but I, you know, Steve uh, said to me, um, he basically said, can I take a look at some of your old stories? And it was born out of conversations, I think, and, and very long emails, uh, mostly long in my part to you. Uh, and Steve, like a good uh, sly, uh, sort of an intellectual sleuth, I, I think, if you will, began uh, asking me about the things that I had preferred to write about when I first hit Texas, and, and it, it did uh, begin to emerge, I guess, in discussion that I, I had a preference, a predilection, and that went from a passion to an obsession. And some people, including my wife, uh, uh, who's not here so I could say this, uh, thought it bordered on an unhealthy obsession. Um, in, in covering things that I didn't understand and, and to this day still don't understand, and uh, again to it, uh, primarily African American life in, in Texas, <clears throat> excuse me, and frankly around the country, um, I, I, I should clear up something <clears throat> right away in case there's any confusion. I'm, I'm not black. I just want to be uh, clear on that. Um, the the uh, 